Hi everyone, I'm Steven from futurelooks.com and today we are going to be checking out Gigabyte's first AMD Fusion board. It's called the Gigabyte E350N USB 3. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with AMD's Fusion technology, it's basically a chip that marries a GPU, in this case uh, AMD's HD 506310 Radeon graphics, to a 1.6 GHz AMD CPU. Putting them together, you get a tightly integrated package and it also saves power. In this case, the uh, maximum power of one of these chips is only about 18 watts. The APU on our E350N USB 3, also known as the Zakati APU, uh, also supports DirectX 11 graphics right out of the box. Um, what that gives you is some playable frame rates, uh, allegedly, with uh, at 720p resolutions on some of today's uh, most modern games. Because the E350N is one of Gigabyte's ultra durable 3 boards, it also supports uh, the 3 technologies that make it ultra durable, which is the 2 ounce copper PCB, uh, Japanese capacitors which give you a 50,000 hour lifespan, lower RDS MOSFETs, and ferret core chokes. It also carries the onboard acceleration, the 333 onboard acceleration, which basically gives you USB 3, USB Power 3 and SATA 3. USB Power 3, of course, is that technology that allows you to charge your peripherals like smartphones and iPads and tablets in less time because it's supplying more power to the uh, device. With the E350N, you get yourself a couple of SATA 3 cables, an IO backplane, a Adobe Home Theater sticker that reminds you that this has a lot of home theater PC potential, a full-size manual with a driver DVD and a quick start guide in case you're already familiar with uh, Gigabyte's boards and how they set up. The rear I.O. on the 350N USB 3 includes 7.1 audio. Here you'll see that there's uh, ports to support that and this is based on the Realtek ALC892 audio codec. Beside it are two USB 2.0 ports and an Ethernet co connector, which is Gigabit, and it's based on the RTL 8111E Realtek uh, ad adapter. Beside that are two USB 3.0 ports that are based on the Renesas USB 3.0 chip. Now on the AMD Brazos platform, which is what this is based on, this actually works together with the DVI and HDMI. You can actually run dual monitor on this, but if you're running DVI and HDMI, the VGA will not work. So you either choose to run DVI and HDMI or VGA and HDMI. Finally, we've got two more USB ports for your keyboard and mouse, or if you're using an older keyboard or mouse, you have a PS2 connector on the very end here. While the board does have internal graphics built onto the Zakati APU, it also has a 4X PCI Express slots for graphics expansion. Uh, you can see here that it is electrically 4X because the pins don't go all the way through. There are four SATA 3 or SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. And you can also make out all of the solid uh, Japanese capacitors. And that's of course part of the ultra durable technology in addition to the two ounce copper PCB. Down here, you'll see a two front panel uh, outputs. This is for USB right here. And moving down the back alley here, you'll see that this uses a standard CR2032 uh, button cell battery. And there's four pin power. Absent from this board is of course the CPU. And that's actually hidden under, again, this active heatsink, which has a fan on top. This is one of few uh, AMD Brazos platform boards that I've seen that actually uses a fan. And this is terminated to a uh, fan connector right here. Underneath this heatsink is of course the Zakati APU which runs at 1.6 gigahertz and the Hudson M1 uh, Fusion Control Hub. The heatsink is solidly anchored via four screws on the back so there's no push pins. At the front of the uh, board here you get a 24 pin power connector, it's ATX. You also get the front panel connectors. There is one single three pin fan connector. Around the ITE 
IT8720F IO controller, you'll see the chassis intrusion connector and this diagnostic port here, which doesn't actually have a use quite yet. The Gigabyte E350 and USB 3 supports two memory slots supporting a pair of dual channel DDR3 modules up to 1333 MHz. Uh, the slots support eight gigabytes of memory at 1.5 volts, but we can definitely do better than that. To get the most out of your AMD Fusion low power system, uh, we recommend Kingston's low vol line of HyperX memory modules. These memory modules are short for low voltage, low vo, low voltage, and they run at a miserly 1.35 volts. And on a system with, that uses this little power already, that can make a huge overall difference to the stability and eco footprint of any system. Add a Kingston SSD to this combination, uh, attached to the, one of the SATA 3 ports, and you're looking at a low power, low heat, and silent system that uses less power than a 60 watt light bulb. So overall, AMD's Fusion platform is looking pretty interesting here. You've basically got almost the whole system, uh, minus the memory modules and the hard drives, for about 149 street price for this E350 and USB 3. Uh, it's got a, the same three year warranty as all of Gigabyte's boards, and with some of the tweaks that Gigabyte has done to it, you could probably look towards seeing this as one of the top performing boards once you overclock it a little bit. Uh, it's a very well integrated package here, and we're really looking forward to seeing how this compares to some of the Ion and Atom platforms that are out there once we get this on the test bench. And if you like what we're doing here on our YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe so that we can keep doing what we're doing here. My name is Steven from futurelooks.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in our next video. Take care.